We are now joined uh, via Zoom by Free State Premier spokesperson Sir Lodi Tebe to weigh in on the passing of the education MEC Tate uh, Mahwe. This uh, as tributes pour in from different spheres of government following Mahwe's untimely uh, passing this morning. A very good afternoon uh, to you. Thank you very much uh, for joining us here on SABC News. Uh, good afternoon to you, Bo, and the viewers. Uh, let's start here. I mean, uh, you know, he, uh, he's been hailed for his uh, contribution uh, to the education sector, but that, that's not all that one uh, can say about uh, Tate. How will he be remembered and how will you remember him? He will first of all be remembered as somebody who took a huge risk, like many other activists, in the pre-1990 period and joined the forward trenches of the struggle to eradicate uh, apartheid and went on, of course, to campaign democratically for the ANC to rise to power. Mm. But then on, not only that, he served in various capacities as MEC for Finance, MEC for Community Liaison and Safety, um, a whole range of other uh, roles and responsibilities, and indeed the longest being the MEC for Education, but one of them being the MEC for Finance from 2005 to 2009. So he was always trusted indeed to ensure that um, all of our democratic values uh, do materialize in government, in society. Uh, Dada Silo, what kind of leader would you say um, he was? I mean, you're talking about a time where, you know, he played a role in the ANC, particularly in, in, in the Free State. Uh, I heard the gentleman speaking uh, just before talking to you, talking about the fact that you started working with him uh, in 1993, but even prior to that, he had been involved uh, with the movement. Uh, let's talk about his leadership style and the kind of person um, that he was. Well, very, very patient, very, very focused uh, all of the time, never tiring to try anything over and over again, as long as it made sense to do so. Um, he, he would indeed focus all of his energies on that. And even academically, all of that shows um, that he was that patient person who was always a go-getter always focusing his mind on a goal to be won. And he demonstrated that when he was deployed in government in the ANC. And indeed, that impacted very positively. And we can see this um, by the results that the Free State obtained 88.5, and among others being the leading uh, province in geography, in history, um, in economics and other economic managerial sciences. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's basically championed a partnership between uh, government and the private sector to ensure that the free state, as far as the outcomes of the metric results, reached the pinnacle that it did over all these years, seven and more. Yeah, I, I don't think I gave you an opportunity, and perhaps I should have done so in the beginning, um, to give you a chance perhaps to uh, reach out to uh, his family. I suppose you will be uh, uh, very closely um, talking to them uh, as we lead up to funeral arrangements and so forth. Just a message to uh, perhaps uh, his uh, family as you worked uh, quite closely with them. We already have done so through the Premier. We visited his home. Not only that, did we do that? We visited the home of a warrant officer, Vuyo Mdi. We also visited a warrant officer, Mkupani, in hospital at Mediclinic in Bloemfontein. So uh, the family is quite appreciative of uh, the support that the Free State Government extended to them. And the family will thus designate a spokesperson for the family where it involves matters of the family. But the provincial government, through our Director General, Ndate Kopun Radikonzani, will offer support at five o'clock today he will go back there so we have already done so but it is worth repeating that we indeed uh, express our condolences not only to his children uh, and his wife but to the entire Mahwe clan yeah. his comrades his friends everybody else around the country and indeed the world yeah, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Edith, we've been getting a uh, little bit of information regarding, you know, information around uh, the accident uh, itself, and uh, wonder if there's anything else you can say uh, in relation to that accident. Of course, we're seeing those uh, terrible pictures um, that are playing um, in in the background while I while I speak to you. Um, we, of course, had heard that you know they were trying to avoid hitting cows. Uh, we've heard that they hit a cow. In fact, what what can you tell us about what actually transpired in the early hours? of the morning 
It is three animals that are involved which led to this tragic end uh, of uh, MEC Mafe's life and that of his protector and the uh, serious injuries that warrant officer Mkupani sustained, which led him to Mediclinic, as I explained earlier. Um, we hope that as soon as warrant officer Mkupani um, has healed, has recovered, he will be able to stitch everything together for us. But at this point, we want to focus on his speedy recovery and the fact that the family is mourning and everybody else around the family. Um, it is indeed a very tragic accident. You will see in the background that the South African National Roads um, Agency has tried to erect a fence in the form of a clear view, but there have indeed been very unfortunate incidents where people simply removed the clear view that is that fence, okay. uh, which led obviously to animals straying onto the national road. Mm. It is something that teaches us a very valuable lesson that bylaws must be enforced and that all other laws by all citizens of the Republic must indeed be observed. All right. And uh, Tessa Lodetebe, thank you very much for speaking to us here on SABC News. We certainly do appreciate uh, your time and we also send out uh, condolences to you and uh, your colleagues who no doubt will be feeling the pain of uh, his uh, passing. Thank you.